Okay, it's time, so I guess we can start. Next topic is meet the technical committee that will provide you an opportunity to meet the members of the Debian technical committee that are present at DebConf, hear the status of the open issues before the committee and ask questions about how the committee works, operates, and if you have questions. Go ahead. Now, is it turned on? Yeah. Woohoo! Okay. Um, this is intended to be, you know, more boff and less talk. Um, certainly, we want this to be very interactive. Um, I grabbed the same short set of slides that we used uh, for this last year in Banja Luka and updated them appropriately. And so, we have a very short set of things just to provide a little bit of context and uh, uh, to get things started. And then I firmly expect us to transition very quickly into uh, discussion and uh, we'll, we'll see how things go from there. So uh, to start with, um, there are eight members of the Debian Technical Committee. Um, on this list, I have coded them with italics if they're not here. So as you can see, there are four members or half of the Technical Committee present. Uh, I'm Bdale Garby. I serve uh, as the chairman, nominal chairman of the committee. Uh, we have Don Armstrong and Ian Jackson and Steve Lankashek are also here. Um, and the other four members, as I mentioned, are, are not able to be here at DebConf. Um, but <coughs> uh, that's who we are. Um, the Debian Technical Committee cons uh, exists because of authority that is defined within the Debian Constitution. I won't go through all the details here because, as I said, this is just the same as what we used last year. Uh, for those of you who were not present in Banja Luka at DebConf last year, if you have any questions about the boundaries of the technical committee's responsibilities and, and authority, uh, that's certainly an excellent thing for us to take as questions and to talk about uh, here after we get through this little bit of introductory stuff. Um, in the past, the technical committee has operated almost entirely through bugs being reassigned to the technical committee's pseudo-project um, or, or pseudo package and uh, email. But recently, at the suggestion of Zach, uh, we tried something a little new and a little different uh, of having a, a live meeting on IRC. And a majority of the members of the committee were able to participate, and it was actually fairly productive. So we've had two of these meetings now, and I think going forward, at least for a while, uh, we will try to do these on something like a monthly basis. And if it turns out that's too frequently, maybe we'll back off at some point, but um, for now we're trying to do that. Um, and if you're interested in uh, joining in and watching uh, those discussions, those you're certainly welcome to do so. And if you watch the committee's mailing list, that's probably the best way to see uh, when they're happening and be reminded of them. So for the exciting part, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, on the positive side, um, there are fewer open bugs before the tech committee this year than there were last year. And of the three that I've mentioned here, the first one is actually in the process of being voted right now. We had a call for votes, I think, was it yesterday, Steve, on the Node versus Node.js? And we're in the middle of voting on that. And so hopefully, um, by the time we conclude here at DebConf, we will have heard uh, from enough folks to know what the outcome of that is. Um, the second bug that's open against the committee right now, for our shame, I did not have to edit from last year's slides. Um, eh, we'll talk about that. Um, and then the final one is actually, in some sense, not a very big deal, except to us. Um, but there is uh, an issue, a, a, a fence post issue, in the Constitution right now around the definition of supermajority for votes that the technical committee is taking. Uh, and Ian is working right now on <coughs> uh, exactly what the right text should be for changing that. And that has led us to an interesting sort of sequence of discussions around um, the process by which the technical committee might propose uh, and run general resolutions. Um, this has been part of the authority that the technical committee has under the Constitution for a long time, but uh, to the best of my knowledge, we've never actually uh, exercised this before, so it's led to some interesting conversation. Uh, so with that, uh, this is really sort of all I had in the way of providing context, and it's now time for us to talk about things because I suspect that at least some of the conversation will pertain to them. I'll put the list of 
open issues before the committee back up. And uh, maybe before I completely open up to questions, um, I should offer my three uh, colleagues here the opportunity to each say a word or three about um, the committee and what we're currently doing and anything like that if you'd like to. So, Don. I mean, I don't have anything in particular to say. Just the, the meetings uh, on RSC we've been having, the uh, logs are present, and in the future we'll have the meet bot running. We actually had it at the last meeting, but I forgot to run the command to invoke the logs. So hopefully from now on they'll be there. I, I've published logs out of my own chat client, so hopefully they're, they're acceptable, but we'll, we'll, of course, continue to try to do that. Yeah, the uh, IRC meetings are working really well. I think uh, based on what's happened so far, um, I can say that with much better probability if you now reassign a bug to the technical committee, something might happen about it, which um, would be quite a radical departure. And so I'd encourage people to give that a go. Yeah, so I, I guess I would say I think the one month frequency is about right um, for the meetings. Um, I, I think that that has worked well. Uh, a one month interval is about the right amount of time for uh, me to procrastinate my action items from the previous meeting and then get around to having a little bit of time to maybe work on them. So that that's about the right nag frequency I think for the for an ongoing basis for the committee. So. Trying to think of a question. Um, oh, okay, so um, so so you have the second one on there, um, Python package maintainership. Um, traditionally, the tech committee has been very reluctant to decide on essentially between who should be a package maintainer when essentially two people are are in conflict. Is is there any particular reason um, for that? And do you think it's something that the tech committee should be ruling on? I mean, from some point of view, we are extremely reluctant because all decisions are bad. Uh, I mean, if there's generally there's a problem, otherwise we wouldn't be being asked about it. And at some level, and uh, not even speaking about this example, but if you um, ask somebody to uh, go away, then you've specifically attacked them as an individual. So, um, and sometimes to the choices for alternative alternative maintainers or uh, your alternatives are perhaps untested or maybe intractable as well. And then you've got the added issue that it's a social problem in a entirely volunteer organization where you can't pay someone money to do a job or fire them. Uh, you're, you're operating at their sufferance and their volunteer time. So I mean, I think that's some of the reluctance, but let's see what else people. Yeah, I mean, w one problem well, I mean, we've got a number of problems on this particular question. One is that it's just a very difficult thing to do for the reasons that Don has, has mentioned. But the technical committee has had difficulty with this in the past. Um, we have historically been extremely reluctant to overrule maintainers at all. Uh, this is something that I'm not so happy with, but my colleagues seem to feel differently about this to me. So, well, you know... Uh, I get to be outvoted too. Um, but there are other reasons. Uh, people don't tend to bring issues to us until they've got really frustrated with them. And by the time you've got really frustrated, the, the bad blood and the flame wars are just really impossible. And often you end up with a situation where nobody, yeah, nobody who, who fancies having a good time and doesn't want to get involved in a huge argument will really step up and say, well, I'd like to help out with this package that seems to have some problem. Um, and also, we've had, there's the constitutional rule that we're not allowed to have private conversations. And in practice, what happens most recently is people have been emailing us privately to ask our opinion by you know, picking out the email addresses of the members and just putting them in a two field. And this is a bit irregular. It's worked a lot better than you might expect because we can kind of, you know, people can ask us a question without having to kind of publicly come out and, and make a big deal of it. And then we can say, well, 
actually maybe this would be a more constructive way forward or whatever, and it doesn't necessarily have to become a huge row. Uh, this is something I'd like to see us do more of. Um, I'm not sure my colleagues um, want to be quite as interventionist as I do. I think it would be useful for us to try out um, a mediation role. Um, one of the reasons for that is that we would be able to directly experience how a maintainer who was being criticized actually dealt with interactions with us and then this would give us some information about you know did we think that the complainant was more right than the maintainer or, or what have you um, uh, also it depends of course on who we might have as alternatives um, I think that's all I had to say about that so I don't know that in my own case I've ever felt particularly reluctant to overrule people or even to sort of make choices. The problem is that the, the right answers are often just not very clear. Um, and so one of the things that, that I think is going to be very interesting about um, some of what uh, Ian's trying to propose about uh, sort of the possibility of a, a constitutional amendment to enable explicit sort of private conversations between developers and the tech committee is that I, it creates this sort of intermediate third state between a public discussion that's archived because it's on the committee's mailing list or associated with bug reports that have been assigned to the committee and what has always happened and will continue to happen of people choosing to reach out individually and privately to members of the committee or find you at dinner at DebConf and have a conversation, you know, ask your opinion on something or whatever, and put us in this interesting sort of situation of having this in-between state where you're publicly acknowledging that you're having a private conversation. And I haven't really quite completely wrapped my brain yet around how that's actually gonna make a practical difference in the way we as humans choose to interact with each other. But it at least provides some constitutional air cover, if you will, for the notion that it's okay for us to be, you know, trying to resolve conflict without necessarily doing it all in public with everybody's dirty laundry visible all the time for all the reasons. So going back to Neil's uh, specific question, I, I think uh, you did ask about uh, the, the particular issue of making decisions about who should be the maintainer of a package. If Actually, if I look back at the, the history of the technical committee, I can think of very few occasions where that particular question has been put to us. Um, and so to a certain degree, I think we are uh, perhaps inexperienced at actually resolving such questions um, because this is not the sort of question that generally gets referred to the technical committee partly because people who are actually having a dispute over who should maintain a package um, to the point where they would try to get something like you know changed are they generally are, have fire in their bellies about it and are looking for a quick resolution and the tech committee does does not generally provide quick solutions um, and so there many people will in fact they'll, they'll choose one of several suboptimal socially suboptimal solutions which may be that they will mm, decide to just give up and go away even though they think there's a problem or they will try to browbeat the other person into giving up so they can take over the package, or they will, you know, this sort of thing. As, and I do see scenarios where there are disputes among members of the community over who should maintain a package, which do get resolved by this sort of thing. They, they have very rarely actually been referred to the technical committee. Um, I think it would be, uh, well, I'm not sure if I think it would actually be healthier to have more of those referred to the technical committee because they are twisty issues. They always are. And I don't know if, if the technical committee actually can do a better job, you know, keeping, our, keeping, keeping people civil about it than, than the status quo as far as our problem solving processes there. But I do think that, the, the, you know, this, is, this has been an exceptional case. And I think we finally actually reached some sort of a consensus which just now has to get written up and voted on. Um, but it's been a long time coming. Um, and you know, Ian, your point about private conversations as well, I think is, is uh, I think that's also been a, a key one for us because especially when you're talking about who, who should maintain a package, that winds up often being as much about 
non-technical social communication, interpersonal issues, whatever it might be, as it does about actual technical um, things you can point at saying that the package has been badly maintained. Um, and that makes it, you know, that much harder to actually um, sort out and untangle. I more a comment than a question. Uh, <clears throat> what you're saying about uh, changing the constitution to acknowledge something that's already happening might not per se solve anything except for aligning the law with what is already going on, which is always important because if you let the, 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 the formal rules uh, diverge too much from custom you know, practice, then they become irrelevant. Um, that's, that's a very good point. Um, there's also the fact that at the moment, you know, when, when, when these kind of conversations take place, there's a certain amount of guilt going on. And there's, you know, it's not an advertised thing. We don't have an email address, like a role address that you can email to say, you know, I'm having a bit of difficulty here. Can you help? Etc. cetera. Um, and so I think we're failing. We, we have an opportunity um, to help people resolve their disputes before they get to a really bad stage, um, which at the moment we're missing because there's really nobody in the project that you can go to who will help you out with that, who also then will have the ability to make a decision stick at the end of it. And the technical committee does, in principle, have the ability to make its decision stick at the end. If you, you, know, if you ask the technical committee for help and the technical committee actually agrees with you, in principle, they have the power to, to, to sort it out. But at the moment, you can't really go to the technique. The only way you can do it is by filing one of these you know, huge character assassination bugs. And <laughs> that's not, yeah, that, that does not lead to good outcomes. And I would like us to formally say we would like to try to resolve these things in a way that, that fits better with the way that social monkeys work. Um, and that's not to say that we won't, you know, when it comes down to it, we won't make all the decisions in public. And if we're having technical discussions about some bug or other, that that won't happen in public as well. That, that kind of stuff, absolutely fine. But when we're saying, you know, I'm having some difficulty talking to this maintainer, can you please try and help me persuade them? Or, you know, we don't seem to be getting on. That's the kind of thing that you really can't do in public. You have to do it in private because then it's not a criticism. It's just like, will you give me a, a helping hand? And hopefully, we'll be able to maybe resolve some of these clashes before they get to unpleasantness. And, and I completely agree with all that, and I think it's all good. And I think the point in particular of the notion that you might have some well-defined place to go for some mediation help that actually has some authority behind it in the end if needed is really great. Um, the flip side of that to me is that um, everybody who knows me at all knows that I've been around this project a long time. I've had the privilege of being asked questions by everyone who's ever been the Debian project leader all the way back to Ian Murdoch. I've had the, uh, you know, the privilege or the frustration or the, the, the angst or whatever of being approached by people a lot of times over the years who wanted help understanding why somebody was attacking them or, you know, hated what they did or, you know, th there's this sort of, there's this role, you know, you, you were mentioning the Council of Elders thing in a different context yesterday. Um, I, I certainly am aware of the fact that there's this important role that people who've been around for a while and have some sense of context for sort of what's important and what's not in this project in order for it to, you know, be successful in the long term, that, that there's a role to be played, um, which I don't mind having be part of what I do, which is to just try to be helpful and to, in particular to try to help people understand how to get things done when they're frustrated. Um, and to me, I hope that nobody ever sort of feels that they absolutely have to have, you know, some... Um, sort of uh, good housekeeping stamp of approval on them as, as having some special role in order to be willing to turn to the person next to them and answer a question or to, 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 to invite somebody to say, hey, you know, if you're not happy and, 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 and working for Debian's not making your life better, then 
let me help you figure out why and help you fix it because that's the thing that people who care about each other and are working together collaboratively in the kind of community that we are can and should and ought to do for each other. And I see it happen all the time. I see lots of people sort of going off to have a conversation and coming back feeling better about the world. And I hope that we all sort of take some personal ownership and responsibility for making sure that happens independently of whether we successfully go through the process of making it more obvious that you can come to the tech committee for mediation help independently of, uh, you know, asking for some specific decision on a specific bug that gets reassigned to us. Um, and so I hope that all makes sense. but. Uh, I, it's, it's not that I'm negative about the formalism or that I'm reticent to make decisions or anything like that. I just put a huge emphasis on the value of the informal kinds of interactions that we can have as a way of trying to deal with most of the things that otherwise end up, you know, requiring some kind of a frustratingly complex, unhappy for somebody formal vote. So, uh, Russ, um Alberi's comment on RC is that he agrees with Ian um, that we don't manage to head off these questions soon enough, but he's worried about whether we have the resources to manage to do a lot of mediation. And that leads to a question from, possibly a question from Ben Hutchins, which is that, are there any plans to appoint new members? Right, so the question of resources, I think is one that we will have to, we'll have to, cross that bridge. I think that the right way to deal with that would be to try it a bit and see if it works well. And if we get all horribly overloaded, then you know we'll have to do something else. Um, in terms of adding new members, uh, well, we are at our maximum size of eight. You can't see that on the slide anymore, but uh, um, there are, there's a, you know, there are perhaps at least one person on the committee who hasn't been seen in some time. Um, we might persuade them to step aside, or if they don't answer their email, we might just say, well, actually, it would be better to have somebody else. Um, it's not that clear that, you know, of those eight people, seven of them are reasonably active, I would say, um, and one more or less inactive member is, is a survivable level. Um, if people think that the TC should be bigger, then that's certainly something that could be considered. Um, we're in the process of writing up a set of constitutional amendment GRs to uh, sort out the supermajority thing, to permit us to have private conversations um, and fix a couple of little bugs. Um, yeah, yeah, renumbering section A.1 to not be the same as number A.1. <laughs> um, but um, it would be certainly be possible for us to increase the maximum size in the Constitution. It's not clear to everybody whether that's better. We, it might become a more awkward, cumbersome kind of organization where you need to persuade more people and you need to have longer conversations. And frankly, things are already taking quite a long time often. Um, and not just because we're all busy people and don't always get around to things, but also just because when you've got seven or eight people, all who, who might have an opinion, that takes quite a while to build a consensus or to discover that there isn't a consensus. I mean, sometimes it's really easy. When enough of us get together in one place, um, which sometimes happens at DevConf and sometimes doesn't, or might happen in our IRC meetings, we've discovered on some of these things that if enough of us are in the right place, we can all kind of go, yep. And then we move on and, you know, write a, write a, 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 a something, to a resolution to vote on and just move on. And so I think the thing that's likely to actually help the most in this regard is having some kind of a, a regular excuse to, as, as, as Steve says, you know, make sure the action items have actually had, you know, at least five minutes put to them since the last month and, and get together and, and, and trying to actually work through some of these things. Um, and in fact, as I mentioned, of the three open issues right now, uh, Steve did put forward a, a call for votes on one of the ones that he took as an action item at, at one of our meetings. And uh, that one hopefully will be resolved here in the next week or so. And uh, of the other two, one, the, uh, 
the third one, which has to do with the supermajority thing. Um, there's quite a bit of discussion going on in the last day or so on our list about exactly what the wording of the amended constitution ought to be so that we don't sort of create yet another funny potential fence posting situation in the future. And uh, that's all great. We'll talk through that and our heads will all explode. And once we get all the pieces pulled back together, we'll figure out uh, exactly uh, what text we want and we'll put that out and you'll probably all get to vote on a GR here at some point. So um, th those are all sort of making progress. And I actually, you know, other than the fact that it embarrassed me when I realized that the, the, the Python maintainership bug, I really didn't have to edit it from my slide from last year, um, other than the embarrassment over that. Um, it feels to me like things are actually going okay, and we could actually handle more inquiries, more requests for decisions, if there are some. Um, I'm completely happy to live in a world where the technical committee is boring because we don't have much to do, because Debian developers are taking uh, responsibility for the work they do and are collaborating and arguing and working through their differences with the people sitting next to them and don't need us. That would just be brilliant. Right. I, I agree with what B. Dale has just said, but I don't think actually that the world is that good a place. We're all pretty nice people as by and large, but any organization as big as Debian with as many bugs as Debian has is going to have some, you know, there are going to be situations where somebody gets it wrong and it's important enough that that needs to be looked at again by somebody. And at the moment, I don't get the feeling that when particularly as the submitter of a bug, you are in this position, that people consider escalating the bug to the TC for a technical decision. Um, and I guess that's probably because people don't think we'll make a decision within any reasonable time frame. Um, and historically, that's been true. Um, but I think recently, we've shown that we can do a lot better than that. I mean, it, it, you, you, keep, you keep perpetuating the bad <laughs> I have another type of question. I mean, you said, okay, we have the eight places just basically taken, but also most of the issues or some of the issues have nowadays been human instead of technical. Do you think that the current set of people that are actually in the seats of the technical committee are represent a wide enough diversity in the project? I mean, just to take an easy example, there is not a single woman. For example, so do we think? Do you think there's something to be changed in that sense? I mean, nowadays we also have non-uploading DDs, so I don't know. Just a question. So, given some of the responsibilities of the technical committee, which are to sort of be a body of of expert generalists who can arbitrate on technical issues, I think I would find it difficult to say we should have non uploading DDs in, in the sense that many of the people who are going through that route are, in fact, not, they're doing so because they're not technically um, oriented and, and they don't, aren't involved in the same kind, kinds of technical, they don't have the same technical background that, that the people on the technical committee do currently. So I think I would shy away from saying we should make it, make it more representative in, in that regard. Also, I'm, it's interesting that you, you bring up the question of, of having a woman on the technical committee because the technical committee is actually currently fairly representative of Debian as a whole and the fact that we don't have any women on it and there are very few women in Debian. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, diversity though is an interesting, it's an interesting thought. I hadn't uh, considered that myself before now. Yeah, I, th I think it's, it's important too to remember that anybody can uh, make arguments before the committee as well. Uh, and so uh, while it's true that as a body we're not particularly diverse, um, the diverse opinions are definitely warranted and accepted and hopefully heated on on the discussions that happen so well, that was also in the sense that most of them if i know the people correctly or at least the four of here are all english native speakers which is <laughs> just a fact right um that's, so the, the question, I mean, that, that gets onto the wider question of, um, you know, English being the, the language of most of the discourse within Debian. And it's very difficult to run 
an institution like Debian without having a lot of common language. And that tends to lead to a single common language. And I think um, given the role of the technical committee, which often involves a very detailed discussion of very technical issues at length, um, ultimately, I don't think we're going to get away from people who have a good command of communication in English. That doesn't mean that they have to be a native English speaker, and I don't think that everybody there to them. Manoj isn't. All oh, right, okay. Okay. Um, well, my first language was Dutch, but it's rusty now. I can't hardly speak it, so <laughs> don't think that counts. And, and of course, Andreas. No, no. The question was, can you even function without speaking English on the committee? And the answer is no. Right, but I do think there's a, there's a valid point that um, it, it, we do have many fluent English speakers in the community, in, in the, the, the community of Debian developers who don't have English as their first language. And do we, in some sense, are, are we failing to take on board not by design, but by accident, different um, cultural perspectives that, that would be more representative of significant segments of our developership by having the composition that we do? I think it's a really great question. And it's exactly the kind of thing that, that you know I worry about, particularly when we're having conversations around the pool at night with a beer in hand or something. But what I can tell you quite genuinely and honestly, having been a member of the technical committee now for a number of years and having watched it very closely before that, uh, you know, all the way back to certainly at least when I was DPL and probably even before that, though that gets long enough ago my neurons aren't all that good. Um, I can't think of any time in the history of the committee where anyone proposed for, invited to, and brought onto the committee didn't seem like exactly the right choice from among the body of available developers to help with the kinds of decisions that we anticipated the technical committee would be faced with at that time. In other words, I can't think of any time where there was ever any sort of intentional biasing of the process. And of course, all of us who you know read and study and care about diversity issues understand that you know that's exactly the problem sometimes, that if you don't consciously try to work on these things, nothing ever changes. But at the same time, given what the original objectives for having a technical committee within the Constitution were, I think the, the mix of sort of experiences, skill sets, and representation of different sort of technical working groups within the project over time. And if you look at this list, we've got people who've been release managers, we've got people who've worked on the installer, we've got people who worked on tool chains and have worked on you know, fundamental core infrastructure for the project and who uh, you know, we, uh, worked on the BTS and worked on I mean, sort of everything that's kind of fundamentally important to the project uh, in terms of sort of infrastructure and different technical areas, graphics, various things. We've got a reasonably broad swath of representation of all the sort of different technical activities in the project, even if it's not uh, gender balanced or racially or culturally or language balanced. Um, and so this is one of those things where I agree, yeah, this is something we ought to care about and we ought to think about. And when we decide we have an opening and it's time to, to, to make some changes in the list, I hope that we'll consider that, but I don't actually worry about that a whole lot. Uh, another comment from Russ is that um, if the, the 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 issue of diversity will may become a lot more important and a lot more pertinent if the technical committee starts having to deal with um, a lot more social issues. Um, now there was a a proposal a while back to create a social committee, which hasn't been progressed. Do you think that um, the technical committee should fulfill that role? Um, and if not, do you think that there should be a so well, should there be a body to help mediate the these sort of issues as things like sometimes the package maintainership can straddle those lines? So in answer to the first half of that question, um, by 
default, the factor, or whatever, we are the body that's sort of left. I mean, you can talk to the DPL and trying to get advice. You can talk to other developers and try and get advice. If you're looking for some place to sort of make an authoritative decision, right now the tech committee is it. So whether we really want that or not, it's a role that you know we're sort of stuck with. Um, in terms of whether there should be a social committee or not, uh, that's a really interesting question. We had lots of discussion, as you mentioned, a while back. And unfortunately, th even to me at that time, after thinking about it a lot, the answer wasn't really clear. And the reason it wasn't really clear is that um, we think we can do a pretty good job of defining what is or is not a technical question, but sort of how you bound what the responsibilities are and how you imbue such uh, a group with meaningful power was never really clear to me. Yeah, I mean, the technical committee is not the best constituted body for doing, for, for, for de dealing with those problems, um, but it is the only body that we have in the project that has the authority to do that, and so by default, we're prob we, we're at the moment trying to use it for that, and um, we're not using it in a very good way. And maybe we could do better. Um, I would like to see us try doing this in a slightly more structured way, and if it goes well, then good. Um, project does need more attention to this problem. Um, and there are sort of social problems going on that at the moment just sort of rumble on until eventually somebody gives up. Um, if it doesn't work, we do a bad job, we trust that everybody will tell us and then, you know, we'll do something else. Um, exactly what that something else will be, we'd have to decide then, we the project. So I believe we're down to less than 10 minutes of time. So I'd actually like to pose a question to the audience here at the moment, um, which is we, we've talked a lot about uh, what the, um, you know, what kinds of things that we think we have or haven't done a good job about and, and, and ways that we think we can improve that. I, I would kind of like to pose the question to the, the audience um, to think about occasions where there have been issues that, um, would have been within scope for the technical committee to consider um, that you did you for whatever reason you did not raise to the technical committee um, and that you were not satisfied with how those went whether you were you know the winner or the loser on the on the technical discussion that you did you you were either left feeling either that the right technical solution was not uh, reached or that you felt bad about the process um, and I'd like to ask. Are there some of those issues that you think the technical committee should have been able to take for you? Um, and what are we missing for you to have confidence in submitting those things to us? Um, can I, uh, you asked the question that. I, I want to actually look at the motion and answer it before you answer it. Does anybody have an answer to No one. Well, well, they You're all happy, it. is that it? Well, I noticed Joey didn't come to this session. <laughs> well, for me personally, it was the fact that you can't keep anonymous. You will ruin some of your reputation if you reach out to the technical committee publicly. And the other thing was that I personally was scared that bothering the technical committee because your time is valuable. And I wouldn't think if the issue is important for me, would it be important for you? <laughs> so those are the two things. Joey says he's sick. Oh. I'm sorry, Joey. Feel better. So about an issue where the technical committee might have been helpful, it's not a, my own problem, but um, there has recently been an argument between a uh, non-developer, uh, non so who can't upload on his own and needs sponsored uploads and so on, and a project member. It, it's actually raw audio, I think, where basically there, there has been 
what, what was it exactly? So the support for our audio was removed. I didn't follow the reasons exactly. But basically it created a conflict because the audio maintainer wanted to continue providing support for it in other audio applications. Um, but apparently a developer was against it because there were also technical issues involved, but basically mm, the last mail from the uh, maintainer I have seen was that he basically wants to give up maintaining the package. Okay, um, so what do you think should have been better there? Do you, do you think that it, there should be a process by which a non-DD maintainer can escalate issues to the technical committee, or do you feel that um, somebody involved, you said that this was not an issue that you personally were involved in. Did you consider raising it to the technical committee yourself on behalf of the, the, the non-DD uh, non uploader, maintainer, or, or how can we help there? Well, it's, it's a question who should handle it. So right now, basically, there's only the technical committee, and um, he was also referred to the technical committee from the release team which is, I think, the right team. But it was only on the release team mailing list, so. So the, the release team said, take it to the technical committee, but nobody actually did, is that? Yeah, it, it was, they said basically that it's not the, um, it, it does not concern the release team, but only, um, they should either solve it between themselves or raise it to the technical committee, but so I actually read some of this flame war, and I will try to keep my opinion out of it. Um, the message I think you're referring to was the release team saying, we don't want to intervene in this, we don't think it's our role, and I can't remember exactly what the, the, the wording was, but basically the, the intent was, if you want to take this further, then you should go to the technical committee. And the 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 developer, well, the, the, the maintainer, the non-DD maintainer who was um, upset, chose not to do that. Yes, but, but I think it's also hard for a non-member to raise such things. So, well, harder it, than for it, a member. It, it, I think it is true that, that non-DDs, and maybe, non maybe even DMs, feel that they aren't entitled to bring an issue to the technical committee, but that is certainly not the case, and there is no restriction that I can see that prevents anybody at all, even just a random user, from bringing an issue to the technical committee. Um, and so, you know, you should just not feel inhibited about that. And if your, if your complaint has no merit, then we will dismiss it on its merits, not because of your standing. I was going to say, there are points in history when we had, you know, a flurry of bugs handed to us by one person in particular that we chose to, to treat as not being of merit and to explain to them that you know that wasn't the right thing to do and, and to sort of close them without further action taken. But the point that I'm trying to make is we're not afraid to do that. So I would encourage, as Ian has, just has, that anybody, I don't care if it's a, a user of a package, a DM, a DD, a, a, a sponsored uploading maintainer person, uh, you know, please, if there's something we can help with that falls within the purview of the tech committee, then, you know, please do it. and. Uh, we will let you know if, if we think we've got value to add, and if we don't, we'll try to make that clear in a reasonable time frame, which, as Ian loves to continue pointing out, is something that wasn't always the case, but I certainly hope from here forward will be. Uh, so, Richard, I noticed you said non-member and you said non-DD. Uh, and the, the other comment that I was waiting to make is, how do you give teeth to a social committee? Well, you don't necessarily give teeth to it. For instance, you might make a private resolution the default and publication of the issue only if the committee uh, or, or a mediator can't get the parties to agree. Oh, sorry. So, you know, you don't necessarily give a social conflict resolution uh, team, uh, committee, mediators teeth. Private resolution is the best outcome. Getting the parties to agree is the best outcome. And maybe if you can't get them to agree, mere publication of the issue is a way to say, okay, well, you put an issue forth. 
Yeah, I, I understand what you're trying to say. And if we want to have a boff or something and talk again about whether Debian should have a social committee and if so, what it should do and how it should be constituted and so forth, great. Um, in the context of the technical committee, I think that what we're trying to accomplish with the change that's being proposed to head towards a GR at some point is this notion that uh, it ought to be explicitly constitutionally okay for the technical committee to have private discussions amongst itself or with you know, other members of the project if that seems like the most effective way to address a particular concern. And then, you know, the, the language discussions that we've been having about the proposed text the last day or two are really all around this notion of how do we make sure that while enabling that, we don't sort of enable the committee to somehow start doing everything it wants to do in secret, which would not be desirable. And how do we ensure that everyone understands, both the committee members and the rest of the project and the rest of the world, that our bias is always in favor of doing as much openly, publicly, you know, in view as possible because that's part of our, you know, project's fundamental core value about transparency and not hiding problems. I suggest the last word from the technical committee because we are running out of time. Uh, the video team has to take some rest, so. So I, I, I had a thought along the way here, and I'm going to spit it out and share it with all of you, that um, the fact that we're now doing IRC meetings, I think, is actually a very important change for the technical committee, and the fact that we're dealing with these things in real time, for the simple reason that contentious issues discussed on mailing lists have a very hard time converging, even when everybody involved is actually reasonable and of generally the same mindset and could, in fact, hash these things out if left to their own devices in, you know, in, in real time in, in a room or whatever. Um, and so I think there's, there's a, a lesson to be taken from the, seeing how the technical committee has let issues linger in the past versus what we're doing now with IRC. I think there's a, a lesson there for the wider Debian community about finding ways to resolve issues that don't rely on trying to get a mailing list thread to reach a conclusion. I mean, from this thing, one of the things that people have been talking about is setting up VoIP or something for all of Debian, and, and something like that would be amazing. So if anybody continues thinking about that, that would be pretty awesome. I can imagine having an IRC conference room with a couple thousand developers. That would be pretty cool. I think the final word from me is I'd, I'd really like to see a couple of nice technical issues come to the technical committee where there's just a disagreement about how some package should behave. And yes that would be, no you know, exactly. Yes or no on a given patch. That would be, that would be great. And I think we can, based on the performance part, uh, over the past two IRC meetings, I think you can probably expect to actually get an answer. So please go ahead. And I'll wrap up just by thanking all of you for your time and attention today. Um, we certainly want to do everything we can to help make the project be successful within the, the sort of context and constraints established for us by the, the Constitution. We very much appreciate your interest and please uh, feel free to follow discussions on our mailing list and chime in when you've got useful opinions to add. Thanks very much.